Hello student, myself is Puneet from Prab Kirpa classes. Our today's topic is evolution and fundamentals of business. If a person starts business with the sole objective of earning profit, whether he will succeed in the long run. What factors a person should keep in mind while starting a new business and what risk a business faces? We will try to find out answer to all these questions and much more. So let us start. In this course, we will discuss number one, what is the meaning of business? Why is business considered as economic activity? Number two, what is the difference between economic activities and non-economic activities? Third, what are the important characteristics of business? Fourth, compare business with profession and employment. Fifth, explain a few objectives of business. Next, explain business activities which are auxiliaries to trade. Seventh, what factors are to be considered while starting a business? Explain. Eight. How would you classify business activities? Nine. Define industry. Explain various types of industries giving examples. Next. Describe the activities relating to commerce. Eleventh. What is meant by business risk? Write a few lines on nature of business risk. Twelfth. State the causes of risk involved in business. 13. Business enterprises constantly face two types of risk. What are those risks? 14. How does business contribute to the economic development of a country? 15. Critical analysis about the role of business in the growth and development of India. Concept of business. The term business is derived from the word busy. Thus, business means being busy. However, in a specific sense, business refers to an occupation in which people regularly engage in activities to earn profit. The activities may be related to purchase, production and or sale of goods and services. In this definition of business, three words have been highlighted. Regularly means that one-time activity cannot be regarded as business. Activities must be performed regularly. Further, there must be certain activities. And the third is the aim of activities is to earn profit. Another definition of business is, business is the activity of making one's living or making money by producing or buying and selling goods and services. For example, if a person brings electronic goods once from another city and sells in his city, it is not called business because this activity is not done regularly. However, if he regularly sells electronic goods brought from another city, it is called business. Broad classification of human activities. From the picture, it is visible that human activities may be broadly classified into two groups. First is economic activities and the second is non-economic activities. Now, we will understand the meaning of economic activities and non-economic activities. Economic activities are those which are done to earn money. For example, a worker working in a factory, a doctor operating in his cleaning, an employee working in an office and a teacher teaching in a school are doing so to earn money and are therefore engaged in an economic activity. Non-economic activities are performed out of love, sympathy, sentiment, patriotism, etc. For example, a housewife cooking food for her family or preparing cake on birthday of a family member or a boy helping an old man cross the road are performing non-economic activities since they are doing so out of love or sympathy. The main difference between economic and non-economic activities is the basic motive 
with which they are performed. The same activity can be economic if it results in earning money and can be non-economic if the motive is to serve others. For example, if a teacher teaches in a school and gets salary, it is an economic activity. But if that teacher teaches his or her children at home, then it is a non-economic activity. In this chart, characteristics of business activities have been shown. We will now discuss each characteristic one by one. Following are the characteristics or features of business activities. Number one, an economic activity. Business is considered to be an economic activity because it is undertaken with the objective of earning money or livelihood. It is not done out of love, affection, sympathy or any other emotion. Number two, production or procuring of goods and services. Every business enterprise either manufactures the goods it deals in or acquires them from producers to be further sold to consumers or users. Goods may be consumable items of daily use such as sugar, ghee, pen, notebook, etc. or capital goods like machinery, furniture, etc. Services offered to consumers or business organizations may be in the form of transportation, banking, electricity, etc. Third, sale or exchange of goods and services. One essential characteristic of business is that there should be sale or exchange of goods or services. If goods are produced for personal or internal consumption and not for sale, it cannot be called a business activity. Cooking food at home for the family is not business, but cooking food and selling it to others in a shop or restaurant is business. Fourth, dealings in goods and services on a regular basis. Business involves dealings in goods or services on a regular basis. One single transaction of sale or purchase therefore does not constitute business. Thus. For example, if a person sells his or her old scooter even at a profit, it will not be considered a business activity. But if he or she sells scooter regularly as he is a dealer, it will be regarded as a business activity. Another example may be a person visited another city, buys some mobile phones and sells those phones in his city only once. He does not do this activity of buying and selling of mobile phones regularly. So this activity will not be considered as business. Fifth, profit earning. One of the main purposes of business is to earn profit. No business can survive for long without profit. Sixth, uncertainty of return. Every businessman invests money in his business with the objective of earning profit. But there is no certainty of return in a business. For example, if I open a cloth shop, I cannot be certain that I will earn so much profit or return. There is always possibility of suffering losses despite the best efforts put into the business. Seventh. Element of risk. Risk involved in business are of two types. The first kind of risk can be forecasted and insured. For example, loss by fire, flood, theft, etc. The second kind of risk cannot be forecasted and insured. For example, loss likely to be suffered in business due to fall in demand, change of fashion, strike or lockout at workplace, etc cannot be predicted and insured. No business can altogether do away with risk. Types of economic activities. In this chart, it has been shown that economic activities are of three types. Business, profession, employment. Now, we will understand the difference between business, profession and employment. Number one. 
mode of establishment. In case of business, it is the entrepreneur who decides to set up business and he may have to comply with some legal formalities to set up business. For example, if a person wants to set up a company, he will have to register the same with registrar of companies. In case of profession, membership of a professional body and certificate of practice is required. In case of employment, appointment letter is issued by the employer. Number two, nature of work. Business provides goods and services to the public. Professionals provide services to the people, for example, doctor consultancy. Employees has to perform work as per service contract. Third, qualification. To set up a business, no minimum qualification is required. For example, grocery shop. In case of profession, qualifications, expertise and training in specific field as prescribed by the professional body is a must. In case of employment, qualification and training are prescribed by the employer. For example, add in newspaper by the employer regarding a vacancy for the post of assistant with required qualification of BA plus computer diploma. Fourth, reward or return. In case of business, profit earned is the return. In case of profession, professional fees is charged from the clients. In case of employment, salary or wages are given to employees. Fifth, capital investment. In case of business, capital investment required depends on size and nature of business. For example, shop versus mall. In case of profession, limited capital is required to start profession. Or in case of employment, no capital is required by the employee. Sixth, risk. In case of business, profits are uncertain and irregular. Risk is present. In case of profession, professional fee is generally regular and certain. Limited risk is there. In case of employment, employee gets fixed and regular pay. No risk is there. Seventh, transfer of interest. In case of business, transfer of interest is possible with some formalities. In case of profession, transfer of interest is not possible. In case of employment, it is not possible for an employee to transfer his job to another person. Eight, code of conduct. In case of business, no code of conduct is prescribed. In case of profession, professional code of conduct is to be followed. In case of employment, norms of behavior laid down by the employer are to be followed. Ninth, example. Example of business is shop, factory. Examples of profession are legal, medical profession, chartered accountancy. Examples of employment are jobs in banks, insurance companies, government department. This chart shows the objectives of business in pictorial form. Now we will discuss each objective one by one. Objectives of business. Whenever a person starts business, his sole objective is not to earn profit. He has number of objectives in his mind. If a person follows only one objective, say profit maximization, he cannot succeed in the long run as he may neglect all other responsibilities towards customers, employees, investors and society at large. This may result in non-cooperation or even opposition from the affected people against the malpractices of the business enterprise. So a businessman may have many objectives in his mind as per his goals and aspirations. Following is the list of few objectives of business. There may be many other objectives as well. Number one, profit earning. Profit earning is necessary for survival and growth of business. Profit should be reasonable. It cannot be the sole objective. 
Otherwise, the businessman will ignore other objectives which he cannot afford in the present day competitive world. <laughs> Second, innovation. Innovation means introduction of new ideas or methods in the way something is done or made. Any modification in the existing product to enhance its operation also means innovation. If a business does not adopt modern technology and upgrade its products and services, that business is bound to suffer in the long run. For example, in India, Nokia mobiles were very popular at certain point of time, but they lag behind Samsung in innovation. And after that, Oppo and Vivo have captured a good market share as they launched mobiles with new features. Third, market spending. Maintaining goodwill and reputation of business is very important. <laughs> Sorry. A business must aim at standing on stronger footing in comparison with competitors. It can do so by offering competitive products at reasonable prices to its customers and providing service to them to their satisfaction. Fourth, Increase in productivity. Increase in productivity means minimum input and maximum output. This is possible by ensuring minimum wastage. Business has the objective of optimum utilization of physical and financial resources. Fifth, social responsibility. It means the obligation of every individual or company to contribute resources for solving social problems. We all get raw materials or resources, etc. from society. So we should also give something in return to the society. It was earlier voluntary, now legally binding. India is one of the few countries that has made CSR activity for big companies a mandatory. CSR that is corporate social responsibility puts legal obligation to do something towards society welfare. If a business has a particular turnover, then 2% of 3 years average net profit has to be spent by a business organization on poor students and society welfare. Tata Group is perhaps the most CSR active company in India. It has undertaken initiatives in the field of education, agriculture, environment, sports, healthcare, etc. Other companies like Reliance, ITC, Wipro, Infosys, Ultratech, Cement, etc. are also contributing a lot towards CSR. Next, welfare of employees. Business has the objective to take steps for welfare of employees as well as development of workers which results into sincerity, commitment and loyalty of employees towards organization. For example, some welfare measures include group life insurance, education facility for children of employees, transport facility for employees, free meal facility, etc. Development of workers can be achieved by training of employees. Factor affecting business decision. This chart shows the factors which a person has to consider before starting a new business. Now, we will discuss each factor one by one. Starting a business basic factors or factors affecting business decision. If a person decides to do business, is it possible that he or she can start business next day? No, this is not possible. We cannot start any business immediately. We have to take into account certain factors or analyze certain things or find answers to certain questions. If a person starts any business without proper thinking, it may prove to be disastrous for the business. So it is very necessary for a person to look at the various positive and negative points of a business and after due diligence, he should take steps towards setting up of a business. Following is the list of some factors that need to be considered for starting the business. Number one, selection of type of business. First of all, 
the person has to decide the type of business as a large number of products and services are there in the market. We select a line of business keeping in view demand of the customers, technical knowledge and interest in relevant fields or profit. First point is demand in the market. The demand of Chinese food in a rural area having less population will be very less. The set business can be opened in densely populated urban area. If we find that there is demand of sweets in the market and we open sweets shop, but if we do not know how to make sweets, then what will happen to our shop? So first have technical knowledge of the business, only then start business. Next point is extent of profit likely to be made from the business. The businessman selects the business where there is possibility of greater amount of profits. After analyzing the above three points, we can decide which line of business should be selected. Number two, location of business enterprise. An important factor to be considered at the start of the business is the place where the enterprise will be located. Any mistake in this regard can result in high cost of production, inconvenience in getting right kind of production inputs or serving the customers in the best possible way. While choosing the location of business, we have to consider the points such as demand, availability of raw materials and labor, power supply and services like banking, transportation, communication, warehousing, etc. We have to keep in mind the demand of the product at the place where we are going to open the business. If we open a grocery shop in a wholesale iron market, the demand will be less. The result may be less or no profits or even losses. Third, size of business. At the start of the business, you will have to decide whether the business is to be started on small scale or a large scale. Suppose you are living in a small colony and the residents have to go two kilometers away to purchase grocery. So there is need of one small grocery shop in your area and not a big, not a very big departmental store. Some factors favor a large size, whereas others tend to restrict the scale of operation. If the entrepreneur is confident that the demand for the proposed product in future is likely to be good and he or she can arrange the necessary capital for business, he and she can start the operation at a large scale. Fourth, finance arrangement. No business can be started without money. Finance is required for investment in fixed assets like land, building, machinery, and also for grants assets like raw materials, books, stocks of finished goods, day-to-day -day expenses, etc. You may finance business by savings, loan, relatives. If you take money from banks, NBFCs, relatives, they may impose certain condition on your working style or business. Next, planning regarding workforce. Every enterprise needs competent and committed workforce to perform various activities. Plans should also be made about how the employees will be recruited, trained, and motivated to give their best performance. Next, choice of form of business. At the start of business, we have to decide the form of business. Sole proprietorship. If all things are to be managed by one person. Partnership firm. If two or more persons come together to run the show. Company. If large number of persons are to be involved and, and large amount of money is required, then company may be formed. Next, tax planning. There are a number of tax laws in the country and they influence the functioning of modern business. The entrepreneur has to consider in advance the tax liability under various tax laws and its impact on business decisions. The chart shows that business activities may be classified into two broad categories, industry or commerce.
first we discuss the industry 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 refers to economic activities which are concerned with conversion of raw materials into useful products an industry may produce consumer goods or capital goods consumer goods are those goods which are used finally by consumers for example cloth bread butter etc capital goods are those goods which are used for producing some other goods for example machinery buildings tools farm equipment etc the term industry is also used to mean groups of firms producing similar or related goods for example electronic industry means all firms producing electronic goods cotton textile industry refers to all manufacturing units producing textile goods from cotton other examples are automobile industry mining industry etc pizza industry is made of all producer who make and sell pizza in the market please note that for a pizza maker to belong to the pizza industry he or she must sell the pizza made by him or her in the market if a person makes pizza for his children he will not come under the definition of pizza industry as he is not selling any product for money interactions between industries on industries are dependent on each other and affect each other's functioning the finished goods of one industry becomes the raw material for another for example suppose there are two industries first produces automobile spare parts and the second manufactures motor bikes so the product of first one becomes the raw material for the second one we take another example a pizza maker uses material inputs from the producers of other sectors it includes cheese from dairy producers or vegetables from farmers the pizza shop owner may also have to employ pizza makers to create the finished product pizza industries may be divided into three broad categories number 1 primary number 2 secondary third tertiary primary industries these industries are concerned with extraction and collection of natural resources and reproduction and development of living organisms plants for example mining farming fishing etc the primary sector provides raw material to the secondary sector these are of two types number 1 extractive industries these industries extract or draw products from natural sources for example farming mining extraction of rubber and timber from forests etc number 2 genetic industries these industries are engaged in reproduction and multiplication of certain species of plants and animals with the objective of selling examples of genetic industries are plant nurseries poultry farms and cattle breeding farms secondary industries the secondary industries depend on the primary industries for their activities they use the goods extracted or produced by the primary industry as the raw material produced finished products for example chemical industries sugar mills textile production steel production ship making etc <coughs> sorry secondary industries may be further divided into two types number one manufacturing industries these industries are concerned with the conversion or transformation of raw materials and semi finished products into finished products for example textiles chemicals sugar industry paper industry etc number 2 construction industries these industries take up the work of construction of buildings dams bridges roads tunnels and canals etc which cannot be shifted physically from place to place these industries use the products of extractive industries for example stone marble etc and also the products of manufacturing industries such as iron cement steel etc this industry creates immovable assets
manufacturing industries may be further divided into four types number 1 analytical industry in this industry a basic raw material is analyzed and separated into a number of products for example oil refinery falls in the category of analytical industry in which crude oil extracted from earth is processed and separated into a number of products like petrol diesel kerosene etc number 2 synthetical industry in this industry two or more materials are mixed and processed together to manufacture a new product for example cement soap fertilizer etc third processing industry these industries are engaged in the processing of raw materials through different stages of production to manufacture finished products as in the case of sugar and paper textile industry fourth assembling industry this industry assembles various components or parts to make a new product as in the case of television car computer bicycle watches etc or we can say that many finished products are combined together to make a new finished product tertiary industries it is a technical name for the services sector of the economy this industry is solely focused on providing services not goods to consumers and other organizations so it is also known as the service sector these are concerned with providing support services to primary and secondary industries as well as to trade the examples of tertiary sector industries are telecommunication hospitality industry or tourism healthcare or hospitals education banking insurance legal services transportation or entertainment commerce business activities are grouped into two broad categories that is industry and commerce commerce includes all those activities which ensure the free and smooth flow of goods and services in the economy commerce includes two types of activities number 1 trade number 2 auxiliaries to trade many think that trade and commerce are the same terms and can be used interchangeably but the fact is both the terms are different from each other and carry different meanings trade trade means buying and selling of goods and services for example buying goods from a market and selling it in another market at profit is called trade these days goods are produced on a large scale and it is difficult for producer to themselves reach out to individual buyers for selling their products businessmen do trading activities to make the goods available to consumers in different markets trade is of two types internal or home trade number 2 external or foreign trade so number 1 internal or home trade buying and selling of goods and services within the boundaries of a nation are called internal trade payment for the goods and services is made in national currency either in cash or through the banking system internal trade can be further classified into two categories a wholesale trade it is a business activity that involves buying products in bulk from producers and selling them in smaller quantities to retailers b retail trade it is a business activity which is concerned with sale of goods in small quantities to the end consumers number 2 external or foreign trade when buying and selling of goods and services takes place across the national boundaries of different countries it is called external trade external trade involves the use of foreign currency for example if mr a who is a trader from new delhi sells his goods to mr b another trader from california 
This is an example of foreign trade. Foreign trade can be further classified into three categories. A import trade. It involves purchase of goods and services from foreign countries for use in the domestic market. B. Export trade. When the goods and services produced in home country are sold to buyers in another country, it is called export trade. Third, entry port trade. Entry port or re-export trade involves the import of foreign goods with a view to re-export them. For instance, India may buy wheat from USA to supply the same to Bangladesh. No import duty is levied on these goods. Auxiliaries to trade Activities which are meant for assisting trade are known as auxiliaries to trade. These activities facilitate purchase and sale of goods, transport, banking, insurance, warehousing and advertising are regarded as auxiliaries to trade. These activities facilitate movement, storage, financing, risk coverage and sales promotion of goods. Auxiliaries to trade are briefly discussed below. Number 1. Transport. Production of goods generally takes place in particular locations. For instance, it is mainly produced in Assam, jute in West Bengal, sugar in UP, etc. and so on. It is because of transportation that a producer can sell his goods in different parts of the country or world. Transport facilitates movement of raw material to the planes of production and the finished products from factories to the traders and finally to consumers. Second, communication. Communication helps in exchange of information between producers, traders and consumers. The communication services like postal service, telephone service, email, etc. facilitate trade to a great extent. Third, warehousing or storage. Warehousing means storage facility for the raw material and finished goods. Usually goods are not sold or consumed immediately after production. Warehousing helps business firms to store goods and make them available as and when required. It helps to make available many goods throughout the year. In the absence of warehousing, a producer will have to dispose of the goods as soon as they are produced. Warehouses create time utility. Fourth, insurance. Business involves various types of risks. Factory, factory building, plant and machinery, furniture, etc. must be protected against the risk of fire, theft and other risks. Employees are required to be covered against the risk of accident. Goods held in stock or in transit are also subject to risk of loss or damage. The businessman can pay a nominal premium to the insurance company and get many risks covered in respect of factory, stock, employees, etc. It is added that some risks like war risk are not covered under any insurance policy. Loss or damage being caused at present to Ukraine businesses due to Russia-Ukraine war is not covered any insurance policy. Fifth, banking and finance. Banks provide a convenient and safe mode of payment and help in the buying and selling of goods and services. Banks also provide loans, overdraft and cash credit facility to businessmen so that they can acquire assets, purchase raw materials and meet other expenses and carry on business smoothly. The role of other financial institutions in providing loans to businessmen and individuals can also be not ignored. Sixth, advertising. It is practically impossible for producers and traders to contact each and every customer. Advertising brings goods and services to the knowledge of prospective buyers. Advertisements are always a paid activity where business occupies space in print or non-print media to promote its product or a service.
role of commerce in removal of hindrances in the process of exchange of goods and services. Commerce includes all those activities which ensure free and smooth flow of goods and services in the economy. Commerce includes two types of activities, trades and auxiliaries to trade. Buying and selling of goods is called trade. Auxiliaries to trade include services like transport, banking, insurance, warehousing, etc. The hindrances in the process of exchange of goods and services may be in respect of persons, place, time, risk, finance, information, etc. The hindrance of persons is removed by trade, thereby making goods available to the cons consumers from the producers. Transport removes the hindrance of place by moving the goods from the place of production to the markets for sale. Warehousing activities remove the hindrance of time by holding of stocks of goods to be sold as and when required. Insurers remove the hindrance of risk by providing cover against loss of damage, cover against loss or damage caused to stock buildings, etc., by fire, theft, etc. Banks and financial institutions remove the hindrance of finance by providing the capital required. The hindrance of information is removed by advertising activities, which provide information to the consumers about the goods and services available in the market. So commerce removes all the hindrances in the process of exchange of goods and services. Business risk. Business risk is the risk associated with running a business. The risk can be higher or lower from time to time. But it, but it will be there as long as you run a business. Business risk is defined as the possibility of occurrence of unfavorable events that may result into inadequate profits or even losses. For example, demand for a particular product may decline due to change in fashion or change in taste and preferences of consumers or due to increase in competition. Lower demand results in low sales and less profits. It may be also possible that the shortage of raw materials in the market may shoot up its price. The firm using these raw materials will have to pay more for buying them. As a result, cost of production may increase, which in turn may reduce profits. Business enterprises constantly face two types of risk. Number one, sp speculative risk. Number two, pure risk. Speculative risk. Spe speculative risks are those risks which may result into profit or loss. Speculative risk arise due to changes in market conditions, that is, fluctuations in demand and supply changes in prices of raw materials or changes in fashion and taste of customers. Favorable market conditions are likely to result in gains, whereas unfavorable ones may result in losses. Pure risk. Pure risk involves only the possibility of loss or no loss. The chance of fire, theft or strike are examples of pure risk. Their occurrence may result in loss, whereas known occurrence may explain absence of loss instead of gain. Employee theft, burglary, accidents involving employees are also examples of pure risks. Nature of business risk. Nature of business risks can be understood in terms of their peculiar characteristics. Number one, risk is an essential part of every business. Every business has some risk. No business can avoid risk. The amount of risk may vary from business to business. Risk can be minimized to some extent, but it is not possible to eliminate the risk involved. Number two, business risk arises due to uncertainties. Uncertainty refers to the lack of knowledge about what is going to happen in future. Natural calamities change in demand and prices, changes in government policies and prices, 
improvement in technology, etc., are some of the examples of uncertainty which create risk for business. Third, degree of risk depends mainly upon the nature and size of business. Nature of business, that is, type of goods and services produced and sold, and size of business, that is, volume of production and sale, are the main factors which determine the amount of risk in a business. For example, a business dealing in fashionable items has a high degree of risk. Similarly, a large-scale business generally has a higher risk as compared to a small risk. Fourth, profit is the reward for risk-taking. An entrepreneur undertakes risk under the expectation of higher profit. Profit is thus the reward for risk-taking. So, business risks. Business risks arise due to a variety of causes which are as follows. Number one, natural causes. Human beings have little control over natural calamities like flood, earthquake, lightning, heavy rains, famine, etc. affect a business a lot and can result in heavy losses to the business. Human causes. Human causes like dishonesty, carelessness or negligence of employees Customer dishonesty, theft, non-payment, strike, roads, management inefficiency, etc. can bring heavy losses for business. A disgruntled employee may leak the business secrets to a competitor or he may commit fraud. Third, economic causes. These include uncertainties relating to demand for goods, competition, price of raw materials, collection of dues from customers, change of technology or method of production, etc. The change in the government policies such as a rise in interest rate for borrowing, levy of higher taxes, etc. also come under these types of causes as they have a direct impact on the earnings of the business. Fourth, other causes. These are unforeseen events like political disturbances, Mechanical failures such as the bursting of boiler, fluctuation in exchange rates, etc., which lead to the possibility of business risks. Types of business risk. The business risk can be classified into two major categories. Insurable risk. The risk which can be insured are called insurable risk. Insurable risks are those risks which meet an insurer's company's criteria for coverage. For example, property insurance, vehicle insurance. Business can get compensation from the insurance company in respect of insurable risk provided he has bought an insurance policy. For example, businessmen can take a fire insurance policy to get protection from fire, flood, earthquake. Non-insurable non risks. Non-insurable risks are those risks for which no insurance is available. The businessman cannot get compensation for a change in demand. Further, war or war, like situation, nuclear risk are not insurable risks. How business plays a major role in the growth and development of any nation and why business is regarded as a backbone of the economy. Discuss. Across the country, workers are concerned about their futures and youths see little prospects for a better life. Solutions are not clear and improvements are difficult to find. Businesses do offer some solutions. The benefits of businesses to society are as under. Number one, innovation. Entrepreneurs are innovators. The founder of Airbnb, an American company based in California, found that nobody likes to pay high hotel rates and some people want to make a little money renting out their home, cottage or room. They saw this need and found the opportunity to fill it. Airbnb simply provides a platform 
from which people can rent out their properties or spare room to guests with short term lodging and tourism related activities now airbnb now has an inventory of over 8 lakh properties located in 34000 cities it receives commission from each booking innovators look for consumers needs and find ways to fulfill them it is this innovation that creates employment creation of jobs as and when a new business is started there is need to need to hire employees with the growth of business there is need to hire more people business buys more material and from more people consider the development of internet then came hackers who steal information via cyber attacks in response many software companies came into existence to provide antivirus software so an entire new industry has been created to defend against cyber attacks the result is more new jobs for skilled software developers employees of this industry spend their income at other businesses increasing employment opportunities for other workers third raising standard of living as businesses grow the people working in them and related businesses also grow they have more money to spend and it raises the standard of living for everyone involved fourth satisfy needs business deals with the production of goods and services to meet the needs and requirements of society fifth businesses help in economic growth businesses pay taxes on their profit and employees pay taxes on their income the government uses this tax money among other things to maintain the infrastructure of a city state or country roads bridges public transport and services including police etc this spending by government stimulates the economy six inspiration entrepreneurs affect the economy positively by inspiring others to achieve their example inspires others to seek new ways of doing things innovative companies led by inspiring people attract top talent from around the world the strengthening the economy seventh philanthropy business businessmen not only earn money for themselves and their employees they donate to local organizations and charities too azim premji the founder chairman of wipro donated rupees 22 crores per day average in 2020 for the welfare of society van buffett most successful investor in the world has pledged to give away 99% of his fortune to philanthropic causes some businessmen work towards saving the environment and some give money to build schools and hospitals the presence of businesses is indispensable for the individual as well as for the society to survive now we will learn what is the critical analysis about the role of businesses in the growth and development of india through the 1960s 1970s and even the 1980s the general impression was that nations could only be built through government intervention this was true as per the situation prevalent at that time because the size of private businesses in india at that time was small and the task of building critical infrastructure in a large country like ours was very big now at present the government wants to build 50 km of highways a day produce electricity on large scale government also wants to build new ports modernize existing airports that is the government aims development in each and every field of the economy 
So the question arises, who is going to do this? Obviously, it is not possible for the government alone to accomplish this at its own level. Had it been capable, the government would have already done it. The answer is pretty clear. Public-private is going to make this happen for us. Even as India suffers from a serious level of hunger, here is something that is even more worrying. The country wastes 16% of its farm produce. That is, it wastes fruits and vegetables due to weak cold chain infrastructure. Now the question is, can the government stop this wastage on its own? The simple answer is no. We need large scale investment in cold chain and supply chain management to do this, which can only come from the private sector. We also need large scale investments post harvest handling and food processing as well. The government at its level needs to play the role of facilitator in this space. The government should streamline the difficult regulatory provisions restricting the corporates from playing an elaborate role. Corporate social responsibility has become the norm for any big corporate today. Philanthropy is another arena for corporate engagement in national building. In the early days, corporate houses like Tata's, Birla's and Dalmia's were known for their contribution towards setting up schools, colleges, hospitals. Widespread poverty around them was clearly a big motivator for them to contribute for social causes. During the 1960s, 1970s and even 1980s, running businesses in India was a cumbersome job. As businesses were struggling with high taxes and multiple regulations, so the businesses contributed little to the social cause. Things have changed since then. Thanks to the liberalization policy being adopted by the government from time to time. Corporates are more confident now, today, both about the present and future and once have once again started contributing towards the social welfare and development of the economy. The question now is, are the corporates doing enough towards the welfare of the society? The answer could at best be mixed. Because of strong family bonds, Indian parents prefer to transfer their personal wealth to their offspring. Western parents, in contrast, use their personal wealth to promote social causes. We already have seen great examples in corporate philanthropy in the shape of Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Warren Buffett. Cultures take a long time to change. But as far as Indian corporates are concerned, we are currently being driven by a strong sense of giving. Azim Prenzi, the founder chairman of Wipro, donated Rs 22 crores per day average in 2020 for the welfare of society. A rapid scale up in their activities is expected in the days to come. Now, more and more industries are being set up in the private sector, resulting into the employment to more and more people. Innovation is taking place in different industries, different fields, which is resulting in providing more better goods and services to the people and also increasing employment opportunities. As new businesses are being set up and as businesses are growing, the people working in them and related businesses are also growing, which is raising the standard of living for everyone involved. 
the tax received from businessmen and individuals is being spent by the government to develop infrastructure and providing more services to the people which is stimulating the indian economy if you like our video please like share and subscribe our channel thank you